follow this tutorial to make your screen GUIs go from this to this by using the power of a viewport frame. I'll stop talking now and show you just how to do it. First, you're going to want to open up your output. This output will be useful for showing any errors that will occur in your scripts if you make them. Please don't say it didn't work or anything, just display the error and then I can get to fixing it for you if I see your comment. So don't go around and just saying it doesn't work, I have problems without showing me the actual error. I'll just tell you what's the error and that's, that's what I'll show you. Okay, now that I have that out of the way, let's start off by importing a part through the home screen and then pressing part. I'm just going to go press F to zoom on this part and then we have a nice lock on on this part. Now what you can do is I'm going to use the studs to make a nice size that will be even on all sides. I'm going to go with a 3 by 3 and then by 3 just like this. Now that I have this part right here I will anchor it and maybe change up its color a bit. There we go. Now let's lift this part up in the air maybe about a few studs high and then if you will, you can rotate it. If you already have your part done you can skip through this part but I recommend it. I recommend you turn off cast shadow just so the part image looks a bit clearer. There we go. Now get into a good position for your part image. So just find your position just like this and then when you get to your position that you like duplicate your camera. Rename the camera that I just duplicated to part image. This is going to be this camera will be displaying the part. There we go. We now have a part. Do not move this or your part image. Or actually let's rename this to part camera. I think part camera sounds a bit better and makes up a little bit more sense than part image. Now go into your SAR GUI and insert a screen GUI. Let's rename this to show part. Of course you can name this to whatever you want but I'm going to call it show part. Inside of here we're going to be going into your search objects and search viewport frame. We now have a viewport frame. This viewport frame works a lot differently than your actual frame. You have a background color and everything, but you also have ambience, ambient and light color. You also have selection image object, which everything has, which you might think that this is how you show the part, but it's actually not. Anyways, you could change image color and everything, but what I'm going to do is scale this thing up, put it anywhere you want. Next, I will next get your camera, put it inside of your screen GUI or anywhere around it. I'm just going to put it inside the viewport frame. It can be anywhere in here, but as long as it's in the SAR GUI or pretty much anywhere, I guess. Now, click your part. I'm going to rename this to display part and I'm gonna go put this in the viewport frame as you can see it will disappear from your workspace and you cannot interact with it unless you touch it in here now it won't work yet until you click on this and they should find current camera right here press on that and your cursor should begin to look somewhat like this it'll look different Make sure to hover over your part camera that you put inside of your viewport frame, click that, and then you will see, you will now see the part inside. You can also move this thing around if you want a better image. Scale it up. I'm going to scale it up, make it a little bit bigger, and rotate it a bit. There we go. I like that image. You can also make this rotate and you can also change up its ambient color. So you could do cool stuff like make this thing glow, but that's a bit complicated. I will explain to you how to do that in maybe a different episode if you would like to see that. Make sure to leave a comment if you want to see if you want to see how you can change the ambient ambience and make things glow. 
you can also change the light color which will change up the light. You can also switch this around. This is also somewhat how they use to make legendary pets glow in games. Well, I I think I would like to switch this to maybe a nice I want to use hmm I'm going to switch that to a nice red tint of color. I think that looks quite cool. Now, to rotate your object if you want to show a full 360 display, press on your display part, press script. Let's rename this to object object rotate rotate ah rot rotate there we go. Rotate. Sorry about that. Now, when we have our object rotate, we're going to go and define the part by using local. And then by local part, because that's what we're going to call our variable, local part. And then we're going to put an equal and, and set this variable as script.parent. Because the part is going to be script.parent. Well, actually, let's rename this to... You know, part sounds good enough. No, we don't have to rename it. I was going to come up with a better name, but I think part will do the job just fine. Now that we have a variable, we will start off by do making a while wait. So what we can do is while wait. Do not do while true or else that will completely lag out your game. Do Make sure to use a while wait. And then you can put a little bit of delay if you want to. And then by pressing the enter button or enter key, you should see it autocomplete to with a do and then end. Inside of this, inside of this space right here, it should auto make a little four four um four space gap. One, two, three, four. Or a tab, which is what we usually use. From here, what we can do is we can simply set our part orientation. So if we click on our part as you will see, if we go into the transform tab, you should, you should see orientation. What we can do is we can go part, part, because we already defined up here, we don't have to write script up parent, part dot orientation, because that is one of the properties of the part. Now we can do, will be equal to the part, will be equal to the part, dot orientation because we want it to be the same as a part of orientation but this time we're gonna add a vector 3 dot new we're adding in a new vector 3 a vector 3 is pretty much something that can hold three integer values or three number values so three comma make sure you separate these by commas and then let's say I want to switch it on the y axis Let's just put in a 1. There we go. And then, you know what? I think 0.5 will do better. And then a 0. Now we have our vector 3 value. We can simply close out of the script. And then by pressing the play button, you should see this object beginning to rotate. Just like this. You can also rotate this thing, this object, on different orientations, like this. And just like this, now you can see it spins. It looks really neat. If you want to confuse the player even more, you can spin it on all axes. Which this just looks really weird. It looks cool. And if you want to cool up, it glitched out because eventually it'll just start spinning in all the axes. And yeah. Anyways, you, if you would also like, you could do, if you want to switch it, between four sides you could just do you could pretty much just do a wait two and then you could make sure to put the zeros in zero zero and then inside of those two commas let's just put a 50 now you'll see the size change will be much different as you can see it starts spinning like this anyways thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and if you want to see how to edit the ambience, ambience, ambient and light color of this using a script. Leave a comment down below. Make sure to, sub to subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of this content. Thank you very much and I'll see you 
in the next video. Thank you for watching.